Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn and my channel's Making with Marilyn. Now on my most recent video, I made these flip-flop earrings using my Glowforge. Well, a lot of people that watch my videos have crickets or silhouettes. So today I'm gonna try my hand at making some of these flip-flop earrings with a cricket. Now in my case, I'm gonna use my Cricut Joy, but you can use any cricket you have or your silhouette. I'm going to attempt three pairs of earrings. One pair is going to be made out of this cork fabric. Now what I've done is I've bonded two pieces of this together with heat and bond. Now this is just some real thin cork fabric that I got off of Amazon. You get a lot of sheets, it wasn't too expensive, and it's pretty cute. Then for the part that goes over the toe, I'm gonna to use black glitter cardstock. Then for a second pair, what I've done is I've attached some lamination film to just a white piece of cardstock. So I'm going to cut this out. I'll cut a few layers out so I can glue them together and make them more sturdy. Then I'm going to try to laminate onto them with the same pattern that I used yesterday that made this shoe. Then for my last pair, I'm going to use this really heavy cardstock. This is just a craft cardstock. I got this at Joann's. That's going to be the base of my shoe. Then I'm going to cut out this cute pattern to glue to the base of my shoe so that this is what you see. This cardstock just gives it some bulk. And then I'll cut out a piece of this for the piece that goes over the toe. Now the sublimation earrings should have a good finish on their own. The cork and the glitter cardstock should have a good finish, but on the one that I'm making out of the cardstock and the scrapbook paper, I'm gonna put a coat of UV resin on the top of that. Now this is my first time to ever use UV resin. I played with it a little bit earlier today, so I'll show you that process as well. Then when I'm done, I'm gonna go ahead and put some earring hardware on and the earrings will be ready to wear. Now I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna have my Cricut cut the hole out of them or if I'm gonna use a punch tool. Most likely I will use a punch tool, but if you have good luck with your Cricut cutting tiny holes, you could do that instead. Otherwise, just a small punch will do the job. Now to get started, I want to show you the flip-flop file that I used for this. Now the little flip-flop file that I found was in Creative Fabrica. So I'm gonna to go to my profile, my downloads, and I'll show you what it looks like. It's right here. It comes with several pairs of flip-flops. I just downloaded it to my machine and I was ready to go. Now the other file that I'm using is actually a Tumblr file and I've shrunk it down really small so that I can get a lot of these daisies on my earrings. So let me go ahead and open up that flip-flop file and pull it over onto the screen. I'm gonna use this summer flip-flop number one, but I need to use the SVG file. So I'll go ahead and drag that to my desktop, then I can close this out. So here I am in Cricut. I'm going to say New Project, Upload, Upload Image, Browse. I'll browse my desktop. I'll find the right file and I'll pull it into Cricut. All right, so here it is. Let's just say Open. Now it's already an SVG file, so I can just say Upload. Then I'll click on it and I'll say Add to Canvas. All right, so I'm gonna make this a little bit larger. So the first thing I need to do is just ungroup everything. Now from looking at these pictures over here, it looks like it's not really just three layers. It appears like it could be the blue as one layer, the pink as one layer, and then this little yellow piece as a third layer, but that's not really how it is. Let me pull this off and show you. Okay, first I have to ungroup that shoe. All right, now I can pull this piece off. See, there's a hole back there, and we don't want that. So let me go back. I'm gonna go ahead and make a copy of both shoes and just hold that down here. Now what I can do is I can go right here to the first shoe, and I can say weld. And there's the first base of what we need. Then on the left foot, I'll do the same thing, weld. Now all I need is the pink piece and the yellow piece of each shoe. 
Now, let's see, that is already ungrouped. Yeah, I didn't think I had ungrouped that one yet, so I'll go ahead and ungroup that. If you need to zoom in to do this, it makes it a little easier, or you can just pick what you want over here. But in essence, I want the pink. I'm going to hold down the command and add the little yellow to it. I'll say weld, and I can just pull that right up here and put it where I need it. So we can go ahead and trash this. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing over here. Pick the pink piece, pick the little yellow piece, weld, and it's ready as well. Now what I could have done is I could have taken this one, I could have duplicated it, and then flipped it horizontal. I could have done that for the whole shoe. But I guess I went the long route. Still pretty easy. Now let's see how big these shoes are. Right now they're over three inches tall and I want them to be, I think I want to go 2.25. Now my proportions are locked so everything is going to stay proportional. And now I'm ready to go ahead and cut this. Now I'm going to cut these one at a time on my little Cricut Joy, so I'll say make it. And then I am going to cut from the mat, so I'll say continue. They're cutting the top pieces separate from the bottom pieces. If you were using the same material for the top and the bottom, you wouldn't need to do that. For my first pair, I'm going to do the cork fabric for the base of the shoe and the black glitter cardstock for this piece. So I'm going to go ahead and leave these separate. I'll click continue. Then I might have seen glitter cardstock back there, but I got quick with my trigger finger. So let's say glitter cardstock and done. All right, let's go ahead and cut this. And then I'm not going to bounce back and forth between my computer and my Cricut Joy. I'll just show you right here as I make the cuts. All right, typically you would not use heat tape for this, but it's what I have handy on my desk. Here's all the parts and pieces that we'll need. And so I'm going to go ahead and start with cork ones. They're going to be the easiest. I use my Sharpie to go around the outside of the glitter cardstock. And the reason I chose the glitter cardstock is because this cork has some little black flakes in it or little black speckles in it. Now I'm going to use this clear gel tacky glue. It says it's all purpose, dries clear, and it says it has a strong bond. So I think what I'll do is just put a little bit over here in the corner of my wax paper. And then take a toothpick and apply it with that. And I'm still messy. I'm always messy. But that's probably safer than me squeezing it out onto the back of this. Okay, so this one goes over here on the left foot.
Then I'll do the same thing for the other one. All right, one pair down, two to go. Whoops. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do with this pair is go ahead and bond the top of the base of the shoe to the piece that's just going to give it some thickness. Now, in the end, I'm going to put that resin over the top of these. So even if a little of this glue gets on the top, that's okay. It'll blend in. But I am trying not to get glue on the top. I think it'll be a better look if I don't have blobs of glue on the top. So that one worked out nicely. Let's see how it looks from the back. All right, let's move that over so it fits it just a little bit better. So I'm just taking this glue and working from the middle or the center to the outsides. I have Sharpie all over my hands. I have glue all over my hands. <laughs> That's just how I work. Okay, so I'm going to line up the back and the front. I can tell better from the back if they're lined up because the color of the backing and the front blends in together pretty well. Okay. Now I think what I'll do is I'm going to rip off two pieces of this wax paper and then I'm going to set these shoes in between the wax paper and then I'm going to put something heavy on top. And I'm just putting the wax paper on it in case there's a little glue that seeped out. That way it's not going to rip my shoes. So while I'm letting that dry for maybe five minutes or so, I'll go ahead and move on to the sublimation pair. Now I want a flat, smooth surface under these. I don't want to use the pad that you would use like with a shirt. I want it to be more solid so I get better pressure or more even pressure. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and cut this apart just to make it a little bit easier. Since I cut four of these, I need to make sure that I have a left foot and a right foot and I don't mess this up. All right, so I have one of each. The lamination film is on the top. So I'll flip that over, putting the lamination film on the bottom. Then I'm going to put two tiny little pieces of heat tape. And then I want to cover over the top of this just to protect my mini press. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a second piece on. All right, I'm going to heat this for 45 seconds. I need to make sure I get in the right place, though. I had a problem with that on my last video. I just didn't do very well with it. So I feel confident it's in the right place. So let's hit the timer. I'm going to do this for 45 seconds at high heat. And then I'll meet you right back here. Now, I'm really hoping this didn't turn the paper brown from the heat. So let's see. Oh, those are perfect.
Now this is a sublimation print. If you don't have a sublimation printer, then you could use Cricut Infusible Ink. Okay, feels like I had heat everywhere. And I did not, I'm missing it right there. Let me try to put that back together and see if I can fix that. I think I have the tape over it. That was a bad mistake. How'd I get tape there? Hmm. <laughs> All right, this may not turn out perfect, but it'll be okay. Okay, so that's not perfect, but it's perfectly imperfect, <laughs> and I'm going to use it. Now, if I wanted to, I could also sublimate on the back side. I really feel like I should cut out some yellow or some blue cardstock. I think that'd be really cute. Now, of course, I couldn't stand that, so I cut out some blue cardstock. And I went ahead and cut two pairs so that I could double these up, make it even thicker. All right, I almost forgot about the top pieces that go on those shoes. Now, since this is a solid color, I'm not too concerned about shifting. So I'm not gonna tape that down. Okay, that looks good. I'll do the second one and then we'll. All right, now you can see the color of those, and those came out just great. So I'll set those aside and wait till we bring those earrings back. Now, this is the pair that I had between two pieces of wax paper, and then I had them sitting under a smooth tile that was upside down on them. So it was a real heavy tile. All right, so we are ready to put the tops on these. Let me make sure I have the correct one on the right side. Probably not that big of a deal, but I want to put them the way they go. And those are going to be so cute. All right, so I'll flip these over, put a little bit of this tacky glue on those, and set those down. All right, so we're bringing back this tacky glue. Now, once again, this is the pair that I'm going to use the resin on the top. So let me show you what they look like so far. They are really cute but I do feel like you need the resin on the top to really protect them and give them a little bit of depth or give them a little bit of dimension. Now, I don't know that this is necessary. I've seen other people put the resin directly on things like this, but this morning I had really good luck just putting a sealer over the top first 
Then that allowed the resin to sit on top of the sealer and it gave it a little more dimension. So I'm gonna take these outside, spray just a little bit of this on top, and then we'll be ready to put that resin on. Okay. okay, so I sprayed the fronts and the backs of these, and then I really assume that I should punch the holes out before I use that resin. So that's what I'm gonna do real quick. And Now I got this light a long time ago expecting to do some resin jewelry and I never used it. I never made resin jewelry, but just recently I ordered some of this resin from the Best Uni and everybody raves about it. So I started playing with that this morning and it worked really nicely. So I'm going to link to her channel. She has a YouTube channel. You can find her through that if you're interested in buying some of this. Okay, so like I said, this is my first time to use resin, so I'm not sure exactly how much to put on. I'm just kind of guessing. If I need to do multiple coats, I can, but I'm just going to put some on. And then I'm just going to use this little toothpick to kind of push it around. Now, I haven't watched videos on really the best method to use, so if you know what I should be doing, let me know in the comments. So with this taking some UV light to set it, I think you have quite a bit of working time here. Now I see some bubbles in there, just a few, and when I did use the old-fashioned two-part resin, this is what I did. Hopefully this is okay. I'm just going to get some heat. Okay, I saw one pop down near those. Again, before you do this, make sure this is safe. Don't do it just because I did. All right, I'm going to give those just a minute to kind of self-level. I'm going to check them out really closely. All right, let's put these inside. I'm gonna start with 60 seconds. And honestly, I'm not even sure if you're supposed to use this on paper. I assume you can, but let's see how it turns out. Okay, let me see if these look like they're done. I don't really wanna to touch them in case they're still tacky. Now the UV resin over here and this UV resin, it's really firm. So let me barely touch it. Okay, that feels pretty good, but just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna put it in for one more minute. Okay, I'm gonna let those sit for a little bit and then I'm going to finish this pair of earrings. I put my blue on the back. I have two layers of that blue. And so now all I need to do is put the little flip-flop fronts on the top or the part that goes over the foot. Now because of the lamination film, they want to curl up. So I'm going to put these in between two pieces of wax paper, and then I'll put that tile back on top. I'll let them dry for about 10 minutes, then I'll go ahead and punch the holes. Now we're ready to finish this project up. I went ahead and punched the last holes in the earrings. I've put two sets of hardware on, and I'm ready to finish this last pair. So this hardware has a little clasp down here. So what you can do is, with your hands or with a tool, you can close them a little bit because they're pretty wide open and these are kind of tough to close. 
So I've closed it down just a little bit. Then you can put the front or the back of it through your hole. Now what I've just discovered is easiest for me is lay it down flat on the table. Then you can use something just to push the rest of the clasp through the hole. And that's how this hardware works. To me, with something that really needs to face forward, this works out a little bit better, a little bit easier than the jump rings and the fish hooks. But you can use whatever you want. So I'll finish up this last one. And then I'll show you a picture of these at the end. Now here's the finished earrings. They turned out really cute. And you're really limited by your imagination and by the different types of materials that your cutter might cut. So I use faux leather, I use sublimation, and then I use cardstock, paper, and UV resin. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give me that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, go over there, subscribe, tap the bell, and then select the all notification so that YouTube lets you know anytime I upload new content. Thanks again for joining me, and until my next video, bye-bye.